Hey guys, this is Mr. McKee with um, SEC 150. I want to go ahead and go over installation procedures for the Packet Tracer 7.1.1.1. Um, I'm be installing this on a Windows machine, 64-bit processor. All right, week one, looking at Moodle. All right, we need to complete this first um, assignment here, which I've already made a YouTube video, pretty quick YouTube video on how to do the lab and now I'm going to do a video well this video is going to be for installing pack tracer alright so first thing I want to do is I obviously click on that it's going to uh, download the executable we just wait for that 129 uh, megabytes should do it pretty quick it's going to take it long, long take you guys longer probably at home since I'm using a gigabit connection alright so it's downloaded. Go ahead and click on it. I'm going to choose most of the defaults. Yes, I'll allow it. All right, accept the agreement. Now, Pack Tracer is Cisco proprietary um, program. You guys are all um, on Netacad, anyways, so you guys are allowed to install Pack Tracer. All right, I'm going to choose my default. Pack Tracer. Create a desktop shortcut, sure. All right. Let it start start installing. <clears throat> Packet Tracer, if you guys don't know, um, it's a way of actually, you can set up a um, virtual uh, network diagram is usually what I do with it. Uh, you can actually program switch, Cisco switches, routers, firewalls, um, host machines, PCs, um, servers. All right. So it's done installing. Uh, I use it for a lot of diagrams, but actually you can go through there and program everything too. So it actually works. Uh, first time you log in, you guys are going to need a Netacad username and password. If you don't have one already, let me know and I'm going to set you guys up. Type in mine. Okay. If you guys don't, you guys can actually choose not to um, log in also because there's not going to be any. That's for if you have testing through Packet Tracer. All right, so I have Packet Tracer desktop up. So everything's installed. Let me just move this a little bit. All right. I know I showed you guys really quick on the other video, but some of you guys that are brand new to Packet Tracer might need a little more explanation. Okay, so all your icons and um, routers, switches, all your networking um, devices are down here on the bottom left. All right, so if you highlight network devices, that gives you all your networking devices down here. So more network devices, my routers, switches, hubs, wireless devices, uh, security, um, things like firewalls, my cloud, WAN emulation. All right, click on end devices. That's all my computers, laptops, servers, printers, IP phones, etc. All right, also, um, we're going to be doing it in CIS 115 maybe. If you go down here, you also have the Internet of Things devices that you can program uh, sensors and actuators, motors, things like that. Then you also have like Smart City stuff is more Internet of Things. Uh, RFID tags, RFID readers, stuff like that. All right, industrial, kind of the same thing. Smart grid, you can have batteries, fan, fans, well actually that's a blower, wind turbines, wind detector, solar panels, things like that. We're not going to do any of that in this course, don't worry about it, I'm just showing you guys. Uh, there's your little Raspberry Pis or whatever you want to call them. Uh, single board computers, right? Mostly what you're going to use is you're going to use your network devices, your host devices, 
or end devices, and your lightning bolt is your connections. Now you can either do an automatic connection, which I don't like to do that. I like either picking my copper straight through cables, which is the black solid line, the copper crossover cable, like if you're going switch to switch, click that. If you want to hook up, fire, we're not going to hook any fiber lines up, but you can click the fiber, which is like a orange or gold colored line, and all these other stuff is like for um, setting up serial connections for the most part. All right, we're not going to do any of that. And that's a phone line. All right, and maybe a console connection. If you want to console directly into a a router or switch that's not networked, you can do that. All right, and then down here, structured cabling is like your fiber, All right? Like patch panels. I've never really used that. I mean, it's cool stuff. Copper patch panel, fiber patch panel. All right, you guys can get really in depth in it. All right, so that's that. That's the desktop. Um, if I tell you guys to say create a simple network, and let's say just switch. Just drag it, click and drag to the desktop. Make a couple computers. Drag those, click and drag those to the desktop. All right, and it's pretty good at like you name it, like SW one for the switch one. All right, PC one for the first PC. All right, that's fine with the little label they already have one. Um, if you want to add anything extra, go up here to the place note. Especially in the uh, higher level, like uh, NOS 130 and 230 Windows admin courses, we'll be putting a lot of stuff, you know, IP address, roles, stuff like that. So if you put a note in there, you can add a bunch of stuff. And then even if you have to move it around, you can move around that text box with, with your, with whatever device you're configuring. All right. The red X, if you want to remove if you already highlighted something like that, if we red exit, hang on a second. All right, it gives you the crosshairs. You can click on this, delete it, click on that, delete it, stuff like that. Let's see edit if undo works. So if we undo the kind of like standard Windows stuff. All right. If you want to do a, see if I want to do an area in networking and ellipse. No fill. The outline is like maybe, I don't know, like a blue outline. You do that and then click and drag it all over that area. Say if that's going to be your domain or local area network, you can have it inside that ellipse or circle, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you can move, move all these objects too. All right. So two switches. Um, those should be patch cables or straight through cables. So if I were to go, and when you click on a um, cable, click on a cable, it gives you that little, looks like a RJ45 plug-in. Click on a PC. PC either has a, that would be a console cable, USB cables, connections, or fast ethernet. That's a fast ethernet connection we're doing. So click that, it gives you the, um, it selects the cable and then click on the switch 24 port switch so it's from fast ethernet 01 to fast ethernet 024 24 or it gives you the um, uh, SPF small form factor plugs for gigabit one or two so that has a fast ethernet network card in it so we do fast ethernet one is fine it takes a minute for it to converge the network for it to you know learn what it has and um, get out all the um, protocols up um, say on the switch or a router so you're gonna get a initially get a um, orange or amber uh, circle and then when it actually is converged you'll get greens but if you want to fast forward the time all right there it's it's completely convergence all right so if I want to go to PC I'm make this PC2. Alright, let's do a straight through. Click that. Click
click this, test using at zero, wait for it to converge, fast forward time, all right, it's converged. So now, I don't have anything assigning IP addresses to these, so if I were to make it a, if you see what I'm clicking, we're going to use pretty much, you can use physical and change your network cards, but we're just going to probably use the desktop tab and then IP configuration and maybe the command line, command prompt. So if I want to make this a 192.168. Let's say 1.100. Submit mass. That's the default. That's fine. Don't worry about default gateway DNS server. If I just want to be able to make sure I can physically connect in between PC1 through the switch down to PC2, I'm going to make the other PC. And let's see if I can copy and paste this. Control C. All right. I'll make the other one. 192.168.1.101. Alright, you don't have to save this as soon as you update it. It's saved already. Alright. It's already configured. Alright. Let's do desktop again on PC2. So do V. Alright, control V 101, tab down. Submit mass is automatically entered. Don't worry about anything else. All we want to know is, can we connect? So if I do a ping command, send an ICMP packet, PC1, which is 192.168.100. Alright, get a response back. If I ping, PC2 pings itself, it gets a response back. Okay. And if I go to PC1 and try to ping PC2, ping 192.168.1.101, whoops, that's not going to work. And a break out of that, control C, all right, breaks it. If I do page up, that gives me history, 100, all right. Getting responses back from PC1, which is 192.168.1.100. See if I can make sure I ping myself. All right, so we're good to go. So that right there is a basic setup of a basic local area network. All right, it does other stuff too. You can do like a simulator. Other courses might have that. You can do protocols. It does a whole bunch of cool stuff. But for now, we're just going to use a lot of the defaults in real time mode. Um, pretty much just plan out our network um, and if you guys want to see a more in-depth example let me just get a model tab and this definitely is not going to be we're not going to work on this in this class but here is a oh, that's the actual that's the project you guys are doing so if you see it's not converged when you first turn it on so if you do fast forward time See how all these greens converged and the wireless connected to the, the wireless cards and the laptops connected to the wireless router. All right. So green to green, pretty much you're going to have reds to the IP phone that's not set up. Uh, the VLAN is not set up in that switch for that. And then the routers aren't, by default routers are not, the um, interfaces are not turned on. They're shut down. So we'll get all reds. Doesn't really matter. We're just be able, if we're able to get from all our internal computers to that firewall, that's really all we need for now. All right, I'm going to close that now. I want to actually make sure you guys save it. And hopefully, I didn't delete this thing. All right. Should be the lab diagram. All right, so here we go. Here's our lab diagram. Do zoom out a little bit. All right, so this is what we have. We have a, and all this is not, it's not been configured fully, but just for um, to make a diagram. This is my office I'm sitting in right now. Got a um, 
hate cable, um, ether channel, well, I'm sorry, eight network cards from the main ESXi server that's sitting behind me to my right um, into this switch, and then out of that switch, computer on one right now in the printer, and we have a uh, room right beside me, has the old rack mounted um, server in there, um, camera, All right, from this TP-Link switch, I have Ether Channel connecting to um, the TP-Link switch that's in the lab. Okay, so I have eight channels through that. Um, eight, eight channels of what? Eight, eight cable port channel or Ether Channel from this switch to the switch in the lab. And from the switch in the lab over to our Cisco. 2960X switch. We have an eight uh, cable port channel from there from our TP link to that 2960. And then out of the 2960, we have this little computer I made in um, class. It's like a clear acrylic. Um, it has a solid state um, M2 drive, so it's really fast, but it's just sitting in there. I figured I'd hook it up as a web server. Have cameras in there. Uh, Cisco wireless access point right there. Have my this is actually a PA220 Palo Alto firewall, but I have it. I'm using that icon that's on uh, Pack Tracer, and then from there it goes out to the CenturyLink ISP router that's sitting over there in the server room. Okay, and then inside this red uh, outline, this is the actual lab 0209 lab. Now it has two. Um, networked cameras, has two 3950 Cisco switches, um, and these PCs are not numbered correctly, but on the far left wall you have four computers over there, five computers in the center, five computers directly over from those other computers, and four computers over there on the far end of the right side of the lab. All right, my inter instructor computer, and then the two large monitors. And actually, I'm going to put those two projectors here in the center facing that way and facing this way. So this is a good way, even though this is not networked together, I can ping from these computers if I set up IP addresses, ping other computers. Um, I can set up Ether channel and actually works and test everything before I actually do it physically, um, configure everything. All right, so, and if I wanted to, obviously this Ether channel is redundant. It has four, uh, four cable ether channel between the switch, two switches, and between these two switches, and then eight cable ether channels between these two switches. If I was to go switch to switch, I can do have redundant ether channel links if I wanted to. That's kind of overkill for the lab, but in real life, you'd want to have, <clears throat> even if it's one cable, you want to have um, redundant links. So I could span entry protocol. Um, prevents the um, broadcast loop from um, having a broadcast storm uh, endless loop in here. Uh, and if you see, you can tell um, spin tree protocol, and you guys will get that in net 125, 126. You can tell that's actually working because if you see right here, it knows that there's more than one link connected in between these switches. So it's actually disabled all these interfaces which are all like orange or amber, and it's only it's only allowing one link. <clears throat> so until you have Ether channel actually configured, you're only getting one, in this case, one gigabit can, uh, connection in between those two switches. And same thing for these. You can hardly see them, but down there I see an orange little uh, circle. So that's it's disabled all those interfaces but one. All right. All those, all those, these green circles you see are actually going to the computers. All right, and then Internet of Things for like the um, CTI one fifteen class, we might actually put. I can actually program these door, uh, the office doors and the closet doors, to be sensors for an Internet of Things. So, so Pack Tracer does a really cool job of um, planning out and actually configuring and testing all your um, your networking. Uh, diagrams. All right, and this is kind of references. This is the this is my office in green, and I've got 
labeled it O2O6 office. This is the server closet that houses that. There's a big server rack uh, and a camera, and there's you know other storage junk in there. All right, this is the lab. All right, so that's pretty much set up exactly the way a lab is. So it's not actually working, especially it doesn't get you out to the uh, CenturyLink. Well, actually, I could do a cloud too. So from the CenturyLink router, it's actually hooked to cloud. So I could call that just the internet. All right. So if I go from there, let's go from here, out to there. All right. So that's actually connecting me to the internet. That's how it works, how it's set up in here. All right, and make sure you save it. File save. All right, mine save into my OneDrive. Good to go. All right, so that should be a good overview of Pack Tracer. Um, the big thing is make sure you don't don't send me a screenshot unless I tell you to send me a screenshot. Make sure you guys send me the .pkt file, which is a Pack Tracer file. All right. If I do file save as, all right, it's automatically saving it as a .pkt file. And mine saving to my OneDrive. Make sure you guys do backups. All right. And sure. Exit out of this new one we made today. All right. And I did show you guys a video on actually how to do that um, project or the first lab. So make sure you turn that in as soon as possible. Make sure you guys do um, module one quiz. I'll go over that too and um, do a screenshot of your Pan Academy successful login. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this was informative and helpful.